Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. First, we have to get your mother's permission. Oh, is that all? Well, then we're all set. Well, thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Douglas. Thank you. For what? For marrying Mrs. Douglas. <laughs> My pleasure. It won't cost you anything, Mom. And besides, even if it did cost something, I could... to Mrs. Douglas? <laughs> the whole thing is out of the question. Why is it out of the question? Because it's an imposition on Mrs. Douglas, you tagging along to New York. Tagging along? She asked me to be her traveling companion. It was her idea. Sure, after you worked on her for an hour, like you're working on me right now. <laughs> Mom, did I tell you that Mrs. Douglas says you won't have to worry about my expenses? She's got it all... That does it. If anything proves you're too young to go to New York, it's the way you've been carrying on for the last hour. Now, one more peep out of you, and you go to your room. Gee, just wait. You'll be sorry. When I'm an old lady of, of 34, hobbling around Hooterville, people will say, look at poor Betty Jo. She had a chance to go to New York, but her mother stood in her way. I'll go to my room. You'll go farther than that. You'll go to New York. What? I've changed my mind. You can go to New York. Could you possibly make it two? <laughs> Young lady, that line looks the same as it did ten minutes ago. How come she gets to go to New York? Well, I never thought I'd see petty jealousy from one of my girls. Tell you what we'll do. While Betty Joe's gone, we'll take a little trip. Wonderful. Where? Well, there's a marvelous bill playing at the Pixley Bijou. <laughs> it's a Conrad Nagel festival. <laughs> if I let Betty Jo find out, she'll cancel her trip to New York. Betty Jo, you're gonna need these. Mom, no one takes their own towels to the Ritz Savoy. Don't tell me about big city hotels. They charge outlandish rates and then they only give you two towels. Well, we have room. Well, we'll just make room in. He's going to stay here. I need them. Well, when you try out for the Yankees, maybe Phil Rizzuto will lend you his glove. He's retired from baseball. You see, he doesn't need his glove. Betty Joe, I just made out a list of places of interest for you to see. Uh, These are musts. Uncle Joe, the train's going to be here soon. Kate, a trip to New York only comes once in a lifetime. You don't want to miss anything. Now, after you've seen the python and the periscope and the flat iron building... The python and the periscope? He means the trilon and the perisphere. <laughs> they were attractions at the World's Fair way back in 1939. Which is well worth seeing. The train here. Oh. Uncle Joe, would you go down and tell Charlie that we'll be right there? Yep, but I want to explain to her how to get an extra slab of pie out of them little windows in the automat. <laughs> We sure are going to miss you, Betty Joe. I'll only be gone for weeks. 
A week. Well, let's not get sickening about it. Well, it's disgusting seeing a grown man act like an old lady. Get them suitcases aboard the coach. You got to pick up Miss Douglas in time to make them bus connections in Pixley. Well, let's get the farewells over with. You, you have a good time, honey, and don't worry about us. We'll get along just fine. Sure you will, Uncle Joe. It's going to be kind of nice and quiet around here with nobody bouncing balls off the side of the hotel or running up and down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, dear. I have a wonderful time. Thanks, Mom. And I sure appreciate you not loading me up with instructions. <laughs> well, after all, you're a big girl now. Bye, sis. Have fun. <gasps> Easy, Bobby Joe. <laughs> it isn't forever. <laughs> and, and you stay with Mrs. Douglas. And don't talk to any strangers on the train. And keep yourself bundled up. Okay. And write to me every day. Mom, you promised. And, and watch the food you eat. And, and do everything that Mrs. Douglas says. And, and if you should get an earache during the night... Mom, I haven't had an earache since I was five. Or a sore throat. Or if you should uh, uh, fall down and, and, and skin your knee. Well, I'd bring down the suitcase if she isn't going. <laughs> Of course you will. Goodbye, dear. Look who came to say goodbye. <laughs> oh, he wants to go with you. Well, you be a good boy. And don't talk to strangers. And I'll write you every day. And make sure you eat the right things. And don't get cold at night. Or... Come on, honey. Goodbye, dear. You have fun. You'd be a good girl. I'll take that. And don't forget to write to me every day. Okay, Ma bye. Why'd you wasted enough time with this passenger? Where's my Betty Jo? Why, she's... Can't you see? Who do you think? <laughs> oh, my baby! <laughs> what have they done to my baby? Uh, how do you do, Mother? <laughs> Welcome to... Enchante, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, thank you all for this heartwarming reception. <laughs> Don't look at me. I don't know what happened. Mrs. Douglas came back the same way she went. Well, nothing's happened. I'm still the same sweet Betty Jo that you all know and love. <laughs> oh, I've had a most exhausting ride. Wow! What's the idea, Kate? I just wanted to find out if you were dreaming all this. <laughs> Dear, here you are, home again. What did you do to her? Do to me? Well, nothing. Same old shady rest. It looks so small. <laughs> Same size as it was a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, Betty Jo, you sure look wonderful. So different. Oh, I like your hat. It's darling. It's one like Mrs. Douglas has. Your uh, hair is different, isn't it? Mrs. Douglas took me to her own hairstylist on the avenue. <laughs> the avenue? Oh, well, I thought everybody knew. Fifth Avenue. <laughs> that Robert's divine. He created my hairstyle to enhance my personality. What's left of it? But none of them big city hotels got anything like this, your elevator. Well, I did see something like it. 
It was at the Bronx Zoo, and some pelicans were living in it. <laughs> Betty Jo, you haven't said anything about your room. Oh, Mom, it... Oh, well, my room at the Ritz Savoy was three times this size, and so bright and cheery. And whenever I wanted anything, I merely had to call downstairs. Anybody could do that here. Oh, well, there they had a phone. <laughs> uh, did you have breakfast in bed? Yes, and you didn't even have to be sick. <laughs> Betty Jo, there's something missing. You must have left them in New York. I can't imagine what. Your mitt and your baseball cap that you sneaked into your luggage. Oh, those old things. Oh, I'm having them sent here by express. Your what? Oh, well, after all, Mother, one doesn't pack an old soiled glove in one's personal luggage. <laughs> Mrs. Douglas and I were on the go every minute. Oh, you can't imagine how much there is to do in New York. How, how do you like your supper? Nightclubs, plays, and musicals, and parties. Sounds like you had a busy week. Oh, I was talking about our first night. <laughs> then Mrs. Douglas took me to all the exclusive shops and fancy restaurants. Speaking of fancy restaurants, Pixley Diner's starting a businessman's luncheon for 35 cents. <laughs> And then one night, Mrs. Douglas and Gregory Tremaine took me to a Persian cafe, and we all had shish kebab. That's little pieces of lamb on a flaming sword. Oh, yeah, I, I, I know what shish kebab is, but what's a Gregory Tremaine? <laughs> He's a young man Mrs. Douglas introduced me to. He's the son of one of Mr. Douglas's clients. He's at least 19 and very sophisticated. I can imagine ordering shish kebab and all. I'll bet it was expensive. No, not too much. If I could remember the menu, it was around $12. Imagine $12 for three people. Mother, it was $12 for each of us. <laughs> well, that's outrageous. I could feed you all week on that much. You gotta remember, Kate, and them flaming swords, you pay about 80 cents for the meat and the rest of it's for fire insurance. <laughs> Douglas took me to a party, and guess who we met? The most famous international... Speaking of guess who, guess who had their hair cut at the Hooterville Barbershop Saturday night? <laughs> Wilbur Trammell. One of the most famous international statesmen that... Wilbur Trammell? I thought he and Nora moved to Omaha. Well, they did, but... And he came all the way back here for a haircut? Well, if you'll remember, Wilbur had sort of a peculiar-shaped head. It would take a while for them Omaha barbers to catch on. <laughs> Excuse us, Betty Jo. Um, you were saying? I was about to remark that when Mrs. Douglas and I met the ambassador from Peru, we talked about something more important than uh, haircuts. You met an ambassador? Several. I had the most fascinating conversation with the French delegate to the UN about Have modern some more art. fried chicken. Oh, no thanks. <laughs> right. Fixed it specially for you because you like it. Chicken is so plebeian. At Francoise, Mrs. Douglas and I had pheasant under glass. Well, I'm sure you're going to like dessert. Now, I, I couldn't decide which one you liked the best, so I cooked the whole shebang. We're going to have strawberry shortcake, chocolate pudding, apple turnover, blueberry pie, you name it. No baked Alaska? <laughs> baked Alaska? Oh, unless you'd been to New York, you wouldn't understand. It's sort of um, hot ice cream. No, I didn't get around to making it. Maybe we could barbecue her an ice cube. Mom, I know. Now that Betty Jo's back, let's do something we haven't done for a long time. After we do the dishes, I'll play the piano and we can all sing. How do you country people endure this monotonous existence? <laughs> Betty Jo? Betty Jo Bradley? Sounds like Mom's mad at Betty Jo. Elizabeth Josephine Bradley? She's furious. Sure glad it isn't me. Bobby Jo Bradley? Oh, coming, Mother! <laughs> Why aren't you out in the kitchen doing those pots and pans? I was cleaning room number five. That's Betty Jo's job. 
Well, so are the pots and pans. That girl, where is she? I'll tell you where she is. She's over at the Douglas's. What's that, that again, Uncle Joe? She's over visiting the Douglas's again. She ought to start paying them rent. I'm sick and tired of every time she... <laughs> oh, listen. I mean, uh... Oh, there you are, Mother. I have some delightful news for you. Isn't that a coincidence? I have some delightful news for you, too. The pots and pans are in the kitchen, and number five is waiting to be cleaned up. <laughs> How can you possibly talk about such mundane matters when Gregory Tremaine is coming? <laughs> when he gets here, he can help me sort out this wash, which a certain niece of mine should be doing instead of me. And I go... <laughs> to get up and into some work clothes. You've got a lot of... Who's coming? <laughs> Gregory Tremaine. I told you all about him. He's that fascinating young man Mrs. Douglas introduced me to in New York. Oh, that's a good one. Uh -uh. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. Well, that's the fire eater, the kid with the flaming sword. <laughs> he's passing by on his way to the coast, and he's stopping by to have dinner with me tomorrow night. You mean he's coming here to the Shady Rest? Yes, and I want you all to that's make sure... wonderful. Oh, I'm so glad. And, and since he was so nice to you in New York, I'm going to cook him a special dinner. Let's see. I'll, I'll have baked ham, candied sweet potatoes, blueberry pie. Is something wrong? <laughs> you can't possibly serve that plebeian food to a sophisticated man of the world like Gregory Tremaine. You know, what does he eat? Hummingbird earlobes and cricket kneecaps, El casserole? <laughs> I've already made out the menu. Mother? Pheasant under glass, artichoke hearts mounier, peaches marchambeau, trout almondine. Oh, you can cook them, can't you? I can't even pronounce them. Where did you dig up such a crazy bill of fare? Well, I asked Mrs. Douglas what Gregory liked, and she made some suggestions. Oh, she did, did she? <laughs> now, everybody listen. Gregory is very refined. Also, he starts college next fall. So I've made out another list. Another list. Bobby Joe, don't bore Gregory with how you won the essay contest at Hooterville High. And Uncle Joe, don't wear your old sweater to dinner. And while we're dining, please don't lean your elbows on the table. <laughs> get down, get down, you naughty boy. Why can't you behave like Mrs. Douglas's dog? <laughs> Welcome to the club. Oh, and a couple more things. Yes, I have... like the pots and pans. Get into your jeans. Oh, really, Mother? Yes, really, Mother. Now get. Betty Joe's sure going Hollywood since she went to New York. <laughs> she acts like she's Miss Park Avenue and we're Tobacco Road. Well, I've had it. If you hear a sonic boom, it'll be coming from the Douglas farm. <laughs> New York. Fat Fatty Joe kept wishing that you were there. She did? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, but why did she come back so different? Because New York is so different. <laughs> it's very exciting for a young girl. They get carried away. Oh, yes. I, I guess you're right. I remember how excited I was the first time my aunt brought me to the city. To New York? Uh, uh, no, no, no. Crabwell Corners. <laughs> it took me two weeks to get over it. It's taking me longer than that. <laughs> an apology barging in here like a mother buffalo protecting her calf. Uh, that's what mother buffaloes are for. And, and don't worry about Betty Jo. In a little while, she will be back where she was before she went. Yeah, I suppose you're right. But that isn't going to help me tomorrow night. What is happening tomorrow night? What? We are having Gregory Tremaine for dinner. And you don't know how to cook it? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It, 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 it's a person. And, and I gotta whip up a uh, pompano, amandine, peaches, march. I can help you with that. You know how to cook pompano? No, you... but I have a gourmet cookbook. You can have it. Hasn't been opened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that takes care of dinner. But it isn't going to be quite as easy to take care of me. Oh, it's easier than you think. And for that, I don't even need a book. Why, you are going to the, be the most stunning woman in Hooters well. Mother, the train's in. I thought I told you to stay in the kitchen. 
kitchen. <laughs> Don't argue. The lobby is no place for you when I'm expecting company. <laughs> well, how do I look? I guess it'll have to do. <laughs> My Uncle Joe, you sure look handsome. You're no slouch yourself, Bobby Joe. <laughs> We got a treat coming. I just sneak some of the sauce off of that peach mar shambles. At the Ritz Savoy, a gentleman doesn't come in licking his fingers. Of course not. That's because they ain't got as good a food as your mother can make. Well, that must be Gregory. What's keeping mother? Gregory, enchanté. Betty Jo. Quaint little gatehouse here. I... Suppose the footman here will escort us up to the mansion. <laughs> Gregory, you're as witty as ever. Uh, may I present my family? Bobby Joe, this is Gregory Tremaine, an old friend from the East. Hello. Gregory, my sister, Bobby Joe. How do you do? And this is my footman. Uh, my uncle, Mr. Joseph Carson. How do you do, Mr. Carson? Hiya, Greg. Have a good trip? It's, uh, Gregory. Well, I jetted the first thousand miles, and that wasn't so bad. And then I jolted the last 20 miles on that steam-driven skateboard. <laughs> I wonder what could be keeping Mother. I'll go see. Oh, don't bother. I'll get her. This is Gregory Tremaine. Gregory, my mother. Enchanté, Mr. Tremaine. <laughs> Elizabeth Josephine has told us so much about you. Well, now that the formalities is over, let's put on the feed bag. Uncle Joe, <laughs> what Uncle Joe meant to say is, dinner is served. I've got to hand it to you, Kate. This trout almondine's real tasty. Oh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Tremaine, it might add to your enjoyment to know that Uncle Joe caught these fish this morning. I wasn't going to mention it. That big one right there put up quite a scrap. I had to hit him with my shoe before he lay still. <laughs> Aren't you hungry, Mr. Tremaine? Not really. Betty Joe said trout almondine was your favorite dish. Well, it is, at the Waldorf. Well, I'd be glad to uh, accept any of your suggestions the next time you uh, jet in. Well, perhaps I should talk to the chef directly. Well, you're talking to the chef right now. You mean to say that you, the hostess, the lady of the house, you, you personally go in the kitchen? <laughs> your mother actually cooks. <laughs> well, when you run a hotel, there's more to it than cooking. You have to sweep and dust. And... Sweeping and dusting. <laughs> Amusingly primitive. I've had enough of this. We may be primitive, but we aren't rude. Betty Joe, Mr. Tremaine. Please, Mom. Ever since he got here, he's done nothing but sneer at the hotel and pick at Bobby, you, and Uncle Joe. And the only thing that's wrong with this food is it's too good for him. Just a minute. I'm. You're a phony. That's what you are. Well, I don't have to sit here and be insulted. I'll thank you for my hat. <laughs> Like he was better than everybody else just because he happened to come from a big city. Who does he think he is anyway? Betty Joe Bradley? <laughs> Gee, was I that much of a stinker? Oh, I'm the luckiest girl in the whole world. I've got the best uncle and the best sister. <laughs> And the most wonderful mom. <laughs> well, how about dessert? Should I go get the peaches marshambole? Well, if it's all the same to you, Mom, I'd rather have some of your blueberry pie. Well, <laughs> welcome back to the club. <laughs>
Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.